Morning, glory, evening, grace, brethren, and sistren. Great to have you back with us here with the Lord Awakening and our preaching in voice and in sign language. And it is great to uh, see everybody. And uh, as we said earlier, uh, when we did our weekend study, uh, we were away for about a week and a half. Uh, like with no teaching or uh, preaching videos, uh, thanks to a bad uh, stomach bug uh, that I had. You know, do continue to pray for my wife, who's still recovering, and my mother-in-law, who is not well either. And it is great to uh, be back here, and I certainly look uh, forward to uh, preaching uh, here today, uh, continuing in the book of Mark, uh, chapter 3, and uh, we're going to be, uh, uh, to be looking at the uh, 12 disciples. We're going to be uh, giving uh, some little uh, biographical uh, sketches of the uh, 12 apostles here. And uh, so look forward uh, to the Word of God today. And uh, uh, by way of announcement also, uh, we will be having a, a revival here with a word awakening that will be in sign language and in voice. That'll be October the 25th to the uh, 29th. And also, like we have had to delay it because of the sickness that I had, but not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, <clears throat> we will be starting an, uh, an American Sign Language class with Word Bible Institute. And uh, so, uh, come back and uh, be with us then and uh, learn some more about uh, deaf culture and some uh, sign language. And so now, uh, we'll go ahead and pray, and I'll uh, get started in the Bible. Our uh, Lord, we sure do love you, and uh, we do thank you for the forgiveness of sin, and all of your many blessings, and uh, for this ministry, and the opportunity to preach, and uh, for the book of Mark, and the men uh, in the Bible uh, that, are, uh, uh, that are such great examples for us. And, uh, and uh, we pray that we would uh, rightly uh, divide the word today and just preach us and uh, be with all of those on the uh, bed of affliction, uh, still like uh, my wife and uh, mother-in-law and all the other ones out there, uh, that you would just touch them and help them, uh, be with the spiritual needs as well. If there's one lost, uh, pray that they would be saved, one discouraged, I pray that uh, they would be encouraged and one backslid. I pray that, uh, that they would be reclaimed and just help us to uh, preach and to sign and to uh, sign right and, uh, and, uh, and just touch us. Uh, touch and help us is our prayer. For it's in uh, Christ's name we pray all these things. Amen and amen. And so now we go back to the book of Mark in chapter 3, uh, picking up where we uh, left off last time. And we'll start now with verse 14. It says, And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach. And our Lord, we just uh, pray now that you would uh, add your blessing to the reading of your word and just help us as we uh, try to preach the word and just uh, touch hearts and souls and may Christ be honored today. For it's in that uh, precious name of Christ we do pray. Amen and amen. And so now uh, we get into uh, Jesus calling the twelve Apostles. And as we said, this is a, a great text here. And I highly uh, encourage everyone uh, to, uh, uh, to read more about the Apostles. Read more about the Apostles. As uh, I have this uh, book here that I recommend. 
And now this book is called All the Apostles of the Bible. See there, it's by uh, Herbert Locker. Lockyer, probably that's how you say his name. It's Herbert Lockyer, and I highly uh, recommend that book for a further study of all the apostles of the Bible. But here, like we have Jesus uh, calling those twelve, and it says that he might send them forth to preach. So, you know, really just as always, it's always been that God wants preachers. Uh, you know, first, just, you know, we talk like about a calling. You know, like who does God call? God calls preachers. You know, that's the only uh, vocation that's in the Bible, is a call to preach. You know, we don't see people like in other, uh, you know, vocations, you know, having that calling. Like people, you know, who work in factories or plants or like people like who become lawyers or, you know, like college professors or, you know, like physicians. Um, you know, preachers are who God calls. And, you know, going all the way, you know, back to the Old Testament, you know, there was a need for preachers, you know, for real preachers. You know, that was even an issue. You know, that like the northern kingdom of Israel and, you know, like the southern kingdom Judah had. You know, throughout their, you know, history, you know, they did not have good preachers. You know, they had a lot of false preachers. And here, you know, in the New Testament, you know, we see God, you know, calling preachers. <clears throat> because that is, you know, primarily, primarily, you know, who God used. You know, yes, you know, God uses <coughs> laymen and, you know, lay women. But, you know, like in the Bible and you know, throughout our, you know, like, Christian, you know, history, you know, the most, you know, like, prominent, you know, people who made the biggest, you know, like, impact on Christianity, you know, were preachers. You know, with men like, you know, George Whitfield and, and, uh, John and Charles Wesley and, uh, you know, like, uh, Charles... Finney, and George Mueller, you know, D.L. Moody, R.A. Torrey. <clears throat> and even, uh, you know, like most of, you know, the women, you know, that we have, you know, like in church history, you know, with preachers' wives, or, you know, they were like a mom, you know, to preachers. <clears throat> See if, you know, like, of course, God, you know, uses, you know, lay people. <clears throat> but God calls preachers. You know, and especially now, you know, we need preachers. You know, in our, you know, society, as wicked as it is, you know, we need more men, you know, like these twelve. You know, I'm not talking about spiritually dead preachers. You know, we need people, you know, who will be, you know, fanatical, you know, who will be revivalists, like we said the last time. You know that we preached, you know, I'm looking for more revivalist. You know, we need men, you know, like these apostles and like the prophets of the Old Testament and like the people, you know, who I mentioned in, you know, Christian history. <clears throat> you know, like, we need men, you know, who pray for hours a day. You know, like, men who will love the Bible. You know, who will give God, you know, all their time and all their effort. <clears throat> you know, like, yesterday, you know, was Saturday. And, like, most people, 
you know, like in the South, you know, especially, like all they did, you know, was watch college football. But, you know, like those great men of old, you know, on Saturday, like all they did was pray fast and study the Bible. You know, and that's what we need. Men, you know, who will be, you know, radical, you know, if I can, if I can say that, you know, about the faith. And so just looking here now, first, you know, like at the importance of preachers. Like we have 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. It says, For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world, by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. See, God uses the foolishness of preaching. See, and that's another big problem, you know, like with new evangelicals and liberals. You know, they don't want preaching. You know, they want to use, you know, like entertainment. But church, you know, like is about preaching church. You know, like it's about preaching the Bible. You see, preachers, you know, are to be about the Word of God. And then, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2. <clears throat> like, preachers have this command. Like, this is a, uh, you know, a pastoral epistle. And like Paul tells Timothy, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. You see, preachers, you know, are to be consistent, you know, they are to preach, you know, at all opportunities they have, you know, they are to, you know, reprove and rebuke, you know, that's the kind of preachers, you know, we need today, like men, you know, who preach holiness, you know, who stand against sin. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. It says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Well, see, it takes preachers, you know, to start churches. <clears throat> They'll say, I have no doubt, and I know this in a few ways, but first, you know, I have no doubt that many men have missed God's call for their life. Like when you look at all of the communities just in the United States that don't have Bible preaching churches. And that's because men have missed God. And like a lot of that has been, you know, people of this generation and the last generation. <clears throat> You know, they have neglected to preach and to uh, pick up, you know, with churches. Just like for starters, you know, lots of churches have closed because they have no preacher. You know, just like I mentioned, uh, you know, just like a minute ago, you know, like Charles Finney. You know, he was primarily in upstate New York where we're going to. And, you know, that was a place that 
200 years ago had a great revival. Like, but now, you know, you look at that area and you see very few Bible-preaching churches. That's because since that time, you know, men have neglected to preach. And like in my time, you know, since I've been preaching, since I was 15 years old, I've had five men tell me that they should have been preachers, but they ran from God's call. And, you know, they dis qualified themselves from preaching. You know, they made too many mistakes and they could not do it. Like in all five of, you know, those men lived miserable lives. Like one of them told me that. That's back when I was very young in the ministry, like an older man, like told me, said, you want to live a miserable life, you run from God's calling. Oh, well, see, we need preachers. You know, we need men. You know, who love God, who love God's Word, who love prayer, who have a desire for revival. And now, we're going now to go back to Mark chapter 3 and just give some uh, little, as we said, biographical sketches of these twelve. But first there in verse 15, it also says, And to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. <clears throat> you know, of course, we know that we are no are no longer in the uh, like what they call the apostolic times, like where we have these kind of healings. But we certainly do still need preachers with power. In verse sixteen, our first one, it says in Simon. He surnamed Peter. Peter. And uh, that name Peter actually means that. It means rock. Because Peter, you know, was who Jesus gave the church to. And that is our, you know, foundation, the church. And his brother was Andrew. And he was a fisherman. Of course, Peter was one of the, uh, the most prominent of the apostles. And he also wrote first and second Peter. And of course, he preached the great message at Pentecost. And then we have verse 17. And James the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James. He surnamed them Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder. And they were the sons of thunder because they had so much thunder, and they were very powerful preachers. <clears throat> And uh, James was the oldest. Their mother was Siloam. And they were uh, native of the, of the city Bethe Bethsaida, Bethsaida in Galilee. And they were also fishermen. And uh, John was the youngest. <coughs> of all the apostles. And John was initially a disciple of John the Baptist. And of course the apostle John wrote the Gospel of John 
1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and also the book of Revelation. Then in verse 18, first, we have Andrew. Andrew was the brother of Peter, and he was also a disciple of John the Baptist, and it was actually Andrew who, who brought his brother Peter to Jesus. Like, even though Peter, you know, became, you know, more well known than Andrew. It was actually Andrew who brought Peter to Jesus. And Andrew preached in Scythia, Scythia, Greece, Asia, Minor, and Thrace. And he was crucified at Petra in Achaia. And then in verse 18 we have Philip. He was also of Bethsaida, and he also heard John the Baptist preach. And he preached in Phrygia, and he died, he died at Hierapolis. And then it says, and Bartholomew. And now, uh, Bartholomew was friends with Philip, and he was also known as Nathaniel. And according to tradition, he preached in India, India, and he was martyred by being uh, placed in a bag and thrown in the sea. And now we have Matthew and uh, his original name was Levi. His father's name was Alphaeus and he was originally from Capernaum and he was a tax collector before being called to be an apostle. And uh, he seems to have been a man of great wealth. And he was a missionary to the Persians, Parthias, and Medes. <clears throat> and of course he wrote the Gospel of Matthew, and he died a martyr in Ethiopia. <clears throat> and then we have Thomas, of course, who people call Doubting Thomas. And he was born in Antioch, and he had a twin sister named Lydia. And he preached in Persia and was buried at Edessa. And even though he was the, the uh, I'm sorry, he was um, the apostle who people know who doubted the uh, resurrection of Jesus, he was actually the first apostle to call Jesus God in John chapter 20 verse 28. <clears throat> then we have another apostle named James. And uh, this James was the son of Alphaeus. And he was known as James the Less because he was younger and smaller than uh, James, the son of Zebedee. And he lived in Jerusalem, 
and was stoned to death in about A.D. 62. And that's about all that we know of James the Less. And then we have Thaddeus. Thaddeus. He is also called Lebaeus in the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 3. And he is also called Judas in Luke chapter 6 verse 16. So he had three names. And he was a missionary to Edessa and was of the tribe of Judah. <clears throat> and then we have Simon the Canaanite. And uh, Simon was not of the city of Canaan, but he was a part of a Jewish sect known as the Canaanites. And also, before becoming an apostle, he was a member of the fanatical sect of Jews called the Zealots, which is why people also call him Simon the Zealot. And other than that, also, we know nothing more of Simon's a personal life. And then lastly, we certainly have the worst one. <laughs> like in uh, verse 19, it says, And Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. So, Judas was a, uh, a native of Kerioth, a city south of Judea. And he was the treasurer for the apostles. And he had the, uh, the, uh, has the, uh, bad, <laughs> the bad history, of course, of betraying Jesus. And so of all of these men, <clears throat> we certainly would like to have more of them except for Judas. So let's live and have a good name for God and don't betray Jesus Christ, but be faithful and pray that God would raise up more like these good Eleven. That's my heart's desire, and, you know, that's what we need. We need more churches started, and we need more revivalists. You know, like here in Alabama, like I said, we have all of these football fanatics. You know, and I'm going to challenge people. You know, we have people, like in so-called Bible, uh, you know, believing churches who love sports. And they know more about, like Alabama and Auburn football, than they do about the Bible. They know more about these football players than they do these men that I mentioned today. You know, and we need better role models, you know, than sports players. We need to look up to, to these godly eleven that we mentioned today. You know, people who will be radical for the Lord, who love God, who will love prayer, who will love the Word of God, who will love holiness. And may God raise us up more men like these eleven. Amen. <clears throat> and so thank you for being with us. And uh, it's... Uh, it's so much, it's just such a, such a joy, so much joy in, like, in going over these, you know, Bible characters. It's life-changing. You know, apply yourself to the Bible. Study the Bible. And, like, study more about these people in the Bible. 
and it will change your life. Amen. And so let's pray for more, for God to raise up more, raise up more men. And like women, you know, women who will, who will marry preachers, who will marry preachers with a heart like these godly eleven. Amen. To change our life, sort of like these eleven men, you know, they changed, you know, the world. That's what we need today. Amen. And so let's be faithful and do what God would have us to do. And we'll be back here next week. Continuing in the book of Mark. So come and be with us. And for now, we'll close in prayer. Our Lord, we certainly do love you. And uh, we thank you for the forgiveness of sin. And all your many blessings and the opportunity to preach. And to uh, do your work in will and all. Oh, Lord, we certainly pray that you'd raise up more. Like these godly eleven that we went over. Men who will be faithful and will go forward for the cause of Christ, who will give you everything that they have, their time, their effort, and just all, all their being. And may we all be faithful and walk after you and change this world for the glory of God. For it's in Christ's name we pray all these things. Amen and amen. And thank you for being with us, and we'll see you next time. Until the day breaks and the shadows flee away, I am Brother Cooper, and I love you, and I appreciate you.